Hello everyone and welcome to another very interesting game. This is from round 3 of the 2019 uh, Isle of Man chess tournament. It's Alexei Shurov versus uh, former World Chess Championship challenger Fabiano Caruana. And uh, one thing uh, you have to know, when Alexei Shurov plays, it, uh, well, anyone can win that game, but that game will definitely be interesting. It, uh, this is no different. Uh, here, this game really uh, awesome stuff, so I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, without further ado, let's check it out. Uh, Shirov with the white pieces opens with e4. Caruana goes for the Sicilian defense with c5, knight to f3, uh, with d6, d4, and c captures on d4. So nothing out of the ordinary here. Knight captures, knight of 6, knight to c3, and Caruana goes for the knight of Sicilian with a6. Uh, bishop to e3 by Shirov, and now knight to g4. And already Corona is asking Shirov, what do you want to do? So here, uh, most of the times you will see this variation, bishop g5, h6, bishop h4, g5, bishop g3, and now bishop to g7. This is one way to, to play this with white. Of course, you're not interested in giving up your dark square bishop for the, for the knight on g4. Uh, but here, Shirov plays the very interesting bishop back to c1. So it's not uh, all, all that rare, but, uh, but uh, I mean, it is rare, but people people still do play it. Uh, here, uh, Caruana, now that the bishop is no longer on e3, that knight is just misplaced there. So Caruana repeats a knight to f6, and Shiro repeats bishop to e3. Now, it's interesting to uh, theorize whether if uh, Caruana repeated bishop to g4, would Shiro really be satisfied with the draw with the white pieces on move 8? Uh, I don't think so. I think he would. I, I I think he would continue the game as he's a pretty much a modern day Mikhail Tal. So I don't think he would uh, uh, settle for a draw with the white pieces uh, <laughs> before he even moved ten. Uh, but it's uh, Caruana who deviates from the line with e5, pushes the knight back, knight to b3, and now bishop to e7. With a th f3, Shirov uh, strengthens the center, and now bishop to e6. Caruana continues development, queen to d2, preparing queenside castle, and knight b to d7. And here uh, uh, we have g4 uh, by uh, by Shirov, uh, just uh, starting starting an attack here, and uh, Caruana just uh, castles here. Now, castling is a very interesting move. Maxim Vasherlagrov had this position with the black pieces against Levon Aronian in 2017 St. Louis Blitz uh, Blitz tournament where b5 was played, but that was a blitz game and uh, Levon was able to win that game. So here, uh, Caruana just castles in the, in the face of the pawn storm. He's not afraid of this. Uh, and uh, there is one game in the database where queenside castle was played, but here uh, Shirov goes for g5. It is a new move, so already as of move 13, we have a completely new game. So let's see how Caruana handles this uh, pressure on the on the king side. He goes knight to h5, and the knight is very useful on h5. Uh, uh, keeps this pawn at bay. You will not be uh, advancing it to f4, and you will not be able to advance your h pawn any further from h4 because of the knight on h5. And there's really no good way to upset the knight here. So rook to g1 by Shirov, and then now b5. Now Caruana starts his expansion on the queen side. Uh, with knight to d5. And here, uh, Corona doesn't like the, the strong knight here. Uh, also, there's a very a very strong control of the b6 square, so Corona grabs it with bishop captures and pawn captures. So now, uh, you can see that black will not be pushing d5 anytime soon here, but on the other hand, because this is now uh, the, uh, this e pawn captured on d5, the f5 uh, square has been weakened, so Corona uses this to his advantage. He pushes f5. Now, oh, you could capture Ampassan here, uh, open up your g-file, but after bishop captures, black is very solid here, you will not be making any uh, attacking ideas here. So, Shirov just continues pushing and also uh, adds another defender to the g5 pawn with h4 uh, and queen to e8. Now, Caruana wants to trade the dark square bishops. Uh, he plays queen to e8. His idea is a bishop to d8 followed by bishop to b6. Uh, that's why he el eliminated the d5 knight. And there he wants to, especially now with the rook on g1, it will be very easy to trade dark square bishops. Uh, with queenside castle by Shirov and now bishop to d8. Caruana continues with his plan. Uh, and now knight to a5. Here, Shirov created a very nice outpost on c6 for his knight. And he's not, he doesn't think that uh, Caruana is interested uh, in giving up his dark square bishop for this knight. So bishop to b6, Karana wants to trade bishop for a bishop. Now uh, also the knight to f4 idea becomes possible as you will not be able to capture it here due to the rook uh, being undefended uh, on g1, not g2. Uh, so, knight to c6, Shirov uh, gets this awesome outpost for his knight, which is extremely useful, uh, attacks a lot of squares here uh, in black's camp, also prevents uh, black from creating any sort of attacks along the c-file. But now, knight
knight to f4 by Caruana. Now uh, you cannot capture because bishop captures on g1, so bishop captures on b6. We have knight captures on b6. Uh, now Caruana has ideas of bringing this knight over to c4, where it will just be a very strong attacking piece. Um, well, a monster knight, if you will, and uh, the hero will either have to give up this bishop, and this will open up the b file for Caruana, or if you want to prevent it, you can play b3, but then you just create a lot of dark square weaknesses around your king. So, uh, queen to b4 by Shirov going after the d6 pawn, and now comes queen to d7, just defending it. And here, c4, uh, a very interesting idea by, by Shirov. Uh, queen to, uh, king to h8, not allowing the king to stay on this diagonal, at some point this bishop will be developed to c4, uh, and now comes king to b1. Uh, you cannot play c5, if you could play c5 uh, for some trade here on c5 and create a pass d pawn, that would be great. Uh, but for the moment your c4 pawn is defending your d5 pawn and it is attacked twice so you don't really have the the, the luxury of doing this uh, so king to b1 first by shirov uh, and now comes rook a to e8 uh, getting the other rook into the game as well preparing to start pushing the e4 pawn uh, we have c captures on b5 uh, grabbing this pawn now comes knight b captures on d5 uh, and queen to b3. So what do you play here? Here Karana plays the very interesting move. Uh, well, a capture here is uh, uh, out of the question for the moment because uh, there is this uh, attack uh, on the knight here with the queen and the rook and also the bishop can just capture back here and the queen is still on d7. But here uh, queen to b3 is played and Shirov is asking Karana what do you want to do with the knight here? Uh, I'm just going to capture it with the rook. But Karana says uh, be my guest. He plays e4 and here Shirov has to decide whether he wants to give up the rook for two knights uh, and of course uh, of course he wants to do that why not uh, he plays a rook captures on d5 we have knight captures on d5 and queen captures on d5 and e captures on f3 so here Karana created a very strong passed f pawn and uh, if he can double rooks on the e file he will definitely have compensation for his sacrificed material uh, and the question is if white can capture on f3 it will be very good for him the problem is he can't because of rook to e1 check and once the king moves now a captures on b5 uh, and, uh, well, after this rook comes to c8, you will have no ways of um, uh, of defending here. Uh, so, uh, Shiro goes back, queen to d2. He doesn't allow Caruana this rook to e1 check, which is very important. And now rook to e4, preparing it to double rooks. And also the rook is just very strong there. Uh, we have rook to g3 by Shirov. Uh, it's, um, it's a very tricky move, but uh, Caruana finds a very nice way to counter it. Uh, he plays uh, queen to e6. He says... Uh, okay, be my guest, grab the f3 pawn, I dare you. And uh, he dares him correctly, because if rook captures on f3, then rook to e1 check, king to c2, and now <laughs> rook captures on f1. This is just uh, beautiful stuff. Uh, rook captures on f1, and now queen to c4 check will pick up that rook, and uh, black ends up being up the exchange with a much better position. Uh, so, you cannot play rook captures on f3, Shiro finds bishop to d3, just uh, the, the bishop will no longer be a target here, and here Caruana has to find a move. So, feel free to pause the video here and try to find the best move for Fabiano in this position. Well, I'll give you a couple of seconds. So, uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on finding uh, a very secretive move that uh, Caruana missed over the board. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, there are actually two good moves here. So, uh, first we're going to check out the more forcing one, which is rook to e1 check. But it's a, it's a really sneaky line. For example, king to c2, you have to move the king, and now a captures on b5. Of course, you are preparing rook to c8. This knight will come under a lot of attack. Uh, rook captures on f3 rook to c8 and now bishop captures on b5 to defend the knight but it doesn't work because of rook captures on c6 and now you have problems you cannot capture uh, because of rook to e2 just wins the queen so here uh, black would just be winning uh, so rook to rook to e1 check is uh, is a pretty forcing winning sequence uh, which uh, which Caruana missed after bishop to d3 but there is another one uh, a less forcing line but also uh, an enjoyable one it's a captures here uh, which just uh, asks uh, white uh, what are you going to play here uh, the point is if you capture the bishop for example uh, the rook bishop captures on e4 you get queen captures on e4 with check king to a1 and now not grabbing the knight but instead rook to e8 first you get the rook into the game threaten mate uh, queen to e1 followed by captures rook captures on e1 will be mate and after white creates some breeding room for his king now you go queen to e2 you attack the queen, 
queen captures, pawn captures, and now the only way to prevent queening is rook to g1. You bring a queen into the game, uh, rook captures, rook captures with check, and you have this endgame where black is, of course, completely winning. Uh, f five pawns to four, and of course, a rook against the knight. So the, pro the point is, after eight captures on, on b5, you cannot capture the rook. You can go rook to g1 to prevent rook to e1, but now the real magic happens. Uh, you get queen to d5, an extremely hard move to find. Uh, where you're attacking the knight here, and also if, if you move the rook, then uh, the, the bishop will also be under a lot of stress. So rook to c1, defending the knight, and now f2. This is total annihilation. Uh, white will create some breeding room for his king, but it doesn't help. Rook to e1, uh, and now you cannot trade here because after all the trades on e1, just queen captures on d3 will be winning. So knight to b4, attacking the queen and attacking the bishop, but now uh, f1, and now you bring... Uh, a queen into the game. So uh, black has two queens now. What do you play here? Rook captures on e1 and now you just move the queen. Rook f to g2 and you attack white's queen which is undefended. So you have to block this rook e2 but now queen to h1 check. Rook to e1 blocking again and now just uh, queen d you, as this queen is still under attack by the knight. You bring the queen to g2 and now white is pretty much without a move. You still have two queens. White's queen is under attack. There is no good move here. Queen d1 will just be met with queen captures on h4 and black keeps the two queens. So uh, really exciting stuff after this bishop to d3 move. Both the rook e1 and a captures on b5 are winning for Caruana but you have to work it out and... Uh, well, the, uh, the players are reaching time control. They still have to make nine more moves, uh, and uh, Shirov is very low on the on the clock. So probably Caruana did not want to overthink this position. And if you know, if you find nothing, nothing, then you just uh, give Shirov more time to to think uh, about what to do. So here, Caruana played rook to e3. Uh, uh, the rook is no longer a target here. You also guard the f3 pawn. But uh, okay, those are all things that uh, uh, weren't even threats. But uh, like I said. Probably uh, playing on, on Shirov's time. Uh, Shirov now takes this opportunity to play rook to g1. Now taking care of the uh, rook e1 check idea. Uh, we have f2 by Caruana and now rook to c1. So now Shirov is uh, guarding the back rank and also keeping an eye on the knight on c6. So none of the idea does, ideas that worked previously work now. Uh, finally, a captures on b5 by Caruana and now comes knight back to b4. Bringing the knight back into the game. Uh, and rook to f3. Now Corona puts the rook behind a pass pawn, and uh, if the bishop and rook uh, at some point will not be guarding the f1 square, uh, will be deadly for white. Uh, bishop captures on b5 uh, by Shirov, and now queen to e4 with check. Uh, and here you have to be very careful. Bishop to d3, the bishop will be overloaded. Uh, it's, it's a very sneaky move because here you play f1, you bring a queen, or even better, a knight into the game. Uh, this is very tricky because now if bishop captures, knight captures with check. Now king has to move, you, you pick up the bishop and you end up being up a whole rook. So uh, you have to be careful here. Shirov plays knight to c2, blocks with the knight, and here we have rook to c8, just piling up on that knight here. Uh, bishop to a6, attacking Shirov's rook, and here Karana says just just says, okay, that bishop is overloaded, you, you can't really capture my rook, he just pushes d5. And now, yes, you cannot capture because the bishop has to keep an eye on the f1 square. Uh, what, what you could do is, uh, but, but it's also a very... Uh, a high, high achieving move, rook to f1. This is one possibility that, that uh, Shirov missed. Uh, this forces uh, Fabi to, to mo move the rooks. Now uh, there is a threat of bishop captures here. So after the rook moves, now you move the bishop, attack the other rook as well, and when this rook moves, now you bring it back. So you basically get the same uh, position for your bishop on b5, uh, but you really misplaced black's rooks. So uh, one, one of the options that was possible. Uh, but Shirov creates a threat differently. Shirov plays a3. He creates some breeding room for the king, and now bishop captures on c8 becomes a threat. Uh, or does it? Here, Fabi plays d4, continues pushing the uh, the passed pawn, and he says, "Okay, you you can capture my rook." Uh, Shirov captures it, as it is the best move here, and now f1 queen. Uh, we have rook captures on f1, rook captures on f1. Now this is not losing because uh, a3 also created some breeding room for the king, and now d3. So Fabi now has an extremely dangerous passed d pawn, and he also has a very strong passed f pawn if he manages to start pushing it. We have knight to e3 by Shirov, and now comes rook to f3, just going after that knight. And here you have some problems with white, so it's not easy to, to play something. You can't move the knight, even though you are about to lose it, you can't move it because queen to c4 check will pick up the bishop on c8. You don't want to allow this. 
missed an arrow there. Uh, so what can you do? How do you how do you continue this position? Uh, again, feel free to pause it and find the best move for Shirov in this uh, position. So for those of you who were able to do it, uh, congratulations on finding such a, such a wonderful move. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's bishop captures on f5. Uh, you prevent rook captures on e3 and you force queen captures on e3. So this is what uh, Fabi played. Fabi played queen captures on e3 and now queen to a5, uh, saying that, okay, you capture my bishop, you're getting made it as your back rank is very weak. Uh, so here, uh, Fabi goes back with the queen, queen to e8, and now comes queen to d5. A beautiful centralizing move uh, with the queen, keeping an eye on this diagonal so no, no sneaky checks are possible, keeping an eye on the queening square, attacking the rook on f3, defending the bishop on f5. It's just a, just a beautiful centralizing move with the queen. And it was in this position that a wild Magnus appeared in the background. Uh, as you can see, uh, there's the wild Magnus in the background, uh, checking out this position on the board. And uh, a, a lot is happening here, you know, uh, who's better here, who is trying to trick who, it's always very exciting when the world champion hovers over your board, uh, you're always very proud if you have a good position, and I believe Shirov, after playing queen to d5, was very proud of his position, you can see even, even Carlsen is trying to make out what's what uh, on the board. Uh, so, uh, uh, what is what on the board? That That's a very good question. Uh, so, how do you continue this? You are up the exchange as black, but but how can you how can you make progress here? Uh, Fabi tries queen to g8. He tries trading queens, and of course, uh, Shirov declines. He plays bishop to e6, pushes the queen back, queen to f8, and now h5. Now, Shirov starts attacking. You cannot push the pawn. The queen will just capture it. Uh, you can't move the queen from f8. The rook will fall. So, what can you do here? Uh, well... Fabi now goes rook to e3, just putting pressure on the bishop here. Also getting the rook out of harm's way. And here, what do you do? Uh, do you continue the attack? Do you play a slow move? Do you play g6? Do you play h6? Well, h6 is very interesting, but with h6 on the board, uh, now uh, d2 becomes a possibility because rook to e3 is basically preparing d2. Now the queen cannot capture it because you lose the bishop on e6. Uh, and if h captures on g7 with check, you will capture with the king. And now, uh, for example, queen d7 check, the king comes to g6 and there are no checks anymore. Uh, all the squares where you can check the black king are covered. Uh, so what can you do? Uh, still, you have problems defending your bishop. Bishop back to b3, of course, you want to uh, guard the queening square as well. But now queen to f2 will be very strong. And, uh, well, you could check the black king a little, but then the pawn falls, the king will uh, slowly but surely make his way down the board. And I think that uh, it's... Uh, it's hard to say if white will be able to hold this. So h6, although it seems like the most exciting move, uh, doesn't really work. So Shirov plays g6 instead. Uh, and Fabi continues with his plan, d2. Uh, we have bishop to f7 by Shirov, uh, just uh, making that queen useless, not allowing a queen to f2. And now we have rook to e2 by Fabi. Uh, keeping an eye on the pawn here, and now queen to d3, attacking Fabi's rook. Uh, and here Fabi finds a very interesting idea. Fabi plays queen uh, rook to h, or h2. You have to keep an eye on this pawn, and also you want to get the rook out of harm's way. So here, what you have to play with white as Shirov is queen to d4. Just a, a move that uh, keeps an eye uh, on this pawn and also doesn't allow any sneaky ideas by the rook. Of course, you cannot play rook to h1 because of just uh, queen captures here. So here, uh, you could try queen to b8, preparing d1 queen, and then queen captures on b2 with checkmate, as the rook also will be attacking that pawn, uh, but then bishop to b3, just covers the d1 square, and now, okay, rook captures on h5, g captures on h7, the game continues. Uh, so this was uh, uh, Shirov's best idea, but Shirov played queen to f3, and now uh, Fabi gets a, a brilliant idea. <clears throat> Uh, it's it's just a, just a wonderful idea, so feel free to pause the video here. It's not an easy idea, uh, but if you find it, you will feel very good about yourself. So, uh, a few seconds as usual. Uh, so, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations uh, on finding such a brilliant move. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's Rook G2. Now, rook g2 is such a multi-purpose move. Uh, of course, if the rook is captured, then just d1 queen. Uh, the problem is rook to g2 is preparing rook to g1, and this will guard the queening square. So how do you prevent this? Shirov played queen to d3. Now, of course, rook to g1 is impossible because it's just queen captures. But now, uh, uh, after, after queen to d3, we have queen to b8. And... Uh, 
this is just uh, this is just beautiful stuff this was not played in the game uh in the game after after uh corona's rook to g2 shiro resigned the game as the, there is a no 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 defense here uh the reason is after queen to d d3 you get queen to b8 and now the same the, the only defensive idea white had uh, against this uh, threat of d1 uh, queen and uh, queen captures on b2 checkmate was bishop to b3 but this no longer works because the rook is not on the h file the rook is on the g file and now you have rook to g3 and this is the idea queen from b8 guards g3 and this is incredible how fabi made everything work he found out that the rook does not belong on the h file but rather on the g file and when shiro played queen to f3 that mistake then fabi uh, sorry about that played uh, that rook to g2 move beautiful move so once again congratulations if you found it here there is no defense once the queen moves you just trade everything queen captures queen captures 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 and now now you finally promote d1 queen and that's that's it uh so yeah uh, rook to g2, beautiful move by Fabi, and uh, after this victory against Alexei Shurov in round 3, uh, Fabiano Caruana is now, uh, well, he, he has shared first, first place because only Fabiano Caruana and Wang Hao uh, are on 3 points, so all 3 victories, and they will face each other in round 4, so definitely we're gonna cover that game, unless, unless it's a real snooze fest, then we might not, but if it's, uh, if it's really good, then, or, or at least interesting, we will show it. So yeah, uh, that's uh, the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Peter Schachtel for a contribution to my channel. Uh, if you haven't checked out tactical music video by, by Huga, do check it out. The link to it will be the first thing you will see in the description below. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you all for watching and uh, I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the Chess.com Isle of Man chess tournament, uh, checking up on your wonderful suggestions as usual uh, and so on. So thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.